Hello, Pilgrim. In today's special episode, I'll be introducing a guest who will be harmonising three ideas you don't normally find together. Dragons, anger, and the spiritual life. Next week, we'll be resuming our usual story exploration format with another classic Disney adaptation. But which one? Here's a clue. The Myth Pilgrim will be going to new depths. <laughs> You're listening to The Myth Pilgrim, and I am Brother Lawrence of the Missionaries of God's Love. At its heart, the spiritual journey is a delightful and perilous adventure, just like the myths and fairy tales we love. This podcast is also a journey, learning from both wizards and saints, enchanted princesses and inner demons. Together, we'll discover how the great symbols of myth and fairy tale can guide us on our spiritual journey to God. So, the guest speaker today is Father Tony Schick, a Catholic priest of the Missionaries of God's Love. Over the last seven years, I've come to appreciate Father Tony as one of the wisest and holiest and humanest uh, priests I know. He is up at 4 a.m. every morning to pray. He loves his spiritual reading and knows the lives of the saints backwards, probably better than they know it themselves, <laughs> and spends most of his ministry today giving spiritual direction to people like me. Importantly for our day, Tony also has the unique insight to bridge the language gap between Christian spirituality and modern psychology. And what you're about to hear is a condensing of over an hour's worth of conversation about dragons and anger and God. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. So, Father Tony, one of the reasons I was inspired to bring you um, into today's podcast, um, talking about anger, is because you've spoken a number of times about a dragon, like the the mythological symbol of the dragon, being a very apt image um, of anger, and and even for Christians. And I want you, can you kind of talk about that a little bit, Mm, (laughs) your experience? Okay, well, uh, it's good to reflect on the fact that dragons are everywhere in popular culture and mythology. And why is that? I think it's because without realising it, when we look at the dragon, we see an image of something that's going on inside, unacknowledged. Mm. And uh, we get pleasure from thinking about watching the dragon in movies and reading about it in mythology because we see portrayed there something within ourselves that's struggling for recognition right. and wanting to be seen, really mm. wanting to be seen and acknowledged and mm. dealt with. Now, I reckon that that so-called, well, that dragon, if you like, within us is our anger. Yeah. Um, so now now just, ha- just have a look at this. Anger, well, anger's enormous, right? Mm. Dragons are enormous. Anger is dangerous and potentially very destructive, like a dragon. Anger breathes fire. Now, if you, if you ever pay attention to what anger feels like inside yourself, you feel like you've got fire in your chest and it wants to come out through your mouth. Um, <laughs> this is the clincher, really, for me. I mean, who on earth thought of a creature that was fire-breathing? Well, we are all fire-breathing creatures. Um mm. Like that, that's the nature of our anger. Um, anger is reptilian. It's it's primordial, like a like a reptile. You know, like like an ancient an ancient creature. Um, n- not rational, if you like. Mm. Um, the contrary of rational. Now that doesn't mean bad. It just means it's not rational. Mm. Um, non rational. <laughs> In the church, we haven't had a suitably positive understanding of the role of anger, and Mm. uh, we've tended to uncritically and rather foolishly, I think, see anger as a sin per se, um, rather than giving it its appropriate place in our lives. And... um, and that creates all sorts of problems for Christians. All sorts of problems. Mm, where do you think that came from, the, the notion that anger is a sin? 
Okay, uh, well, there's, well, at least two things jump to mind immediately. Um, one is uh, just misinterpretation of gospel teaching. So most obviously Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, um, mm. uh, you've heard how it was said, you shall not kill, but I say to you, uh, Anyone who is angry at his brother will pay for it in hellfire. Well, of course, you know. Wow, that's pretty terrifying, isn't it? So, um, so what Jesus is trying to say is, um, is that we need, and, and this is quite clear if you read the, the Sermon on the Mount properly, what he's trying to say is we have to be transformed entirely, uh, not just our exterior actions, but all the way through to our core um, so it's not just enough not to behave in externally damaging ways to each other, such as, you know, um, in extreme terms, killing someone. Um, but our hearts have to be mm. pure. Uh, and uh, so, you know, if, if we're um, inappropriately angry towards um, others, then that's just as much of a problem mm. as if we're killing someone. So the heart needs to be dealt with, not just the external behavior. That's what Jesus is trying to say. But of mm. course, w most of us and much of the church culture um, tends to take almost the opposite response, tends, tends to make almost the opposite right. response of what Jesus is calling us yep. to. So instead of hearing what he has to say, and working just as hard on purifying our hearts as purifying our actions, mm. what we do is we suppress our inner lives or rep repress our inner lives right out of consciousness. Yep. Yep. Um, so our inner, we end up like the Pharisees and, you know, what Jesus says yeah. about the Pharisees, we're whitewashed tombs. We're pretending to ourselves that we're not angry at anybody when actually we are. It's just that we've repressed it out of our consciousness. The anger's all still yeah, there. It's yeah. all... I think in previous ages, the interior life would have, you know, the spiritual life would have been understood to be the real life. Yeah. And anyway, in the interior life, the dragon is real. Or at least, let me say, there is a enormous flying, fire-breathing reptilian mm. reality inside, mm. uh, which, um, well, if you're not going to call it a dragon, you've got to call it something. And it's it matches extremely <laughs> closely what, the way that we picture dragons in our fantasies. Mm. And just as fascinating is also, as much as being all of that, the power, the fire, mm. um, the ferocity, yeah. Yeah. is also that, that common image of a dragon hoarding gold and treasure. Right. So how does that work out yes. in the interior? Yes, wonderful life? question. Uh, yes. All right, well, um, the invitation of the spiritual life is not just an invitation to a moral life mm -hmm. and it's not just an invitation to be kind and loving towards each other and to uh, make it to heaven um, in the end the invitation to the spiritual life is the invitation to a relationship with God and one of the premier ways that we understand the relationship with God is that he dwells within us. That's Jesus' teaching. And uh, I don't know if you've ever thought about what that teaching means, but it means something. When we look within and we look at what goes on within, God is in there in the midst of all that. He is manifesting himself by his spirit um, in our inner movements. Now, obviously, many of our inner movements are not originating in God, they originate in ourselves, they originate sometimes uh, in the power of evil um, and and sometimes they're just natural things but a lot of our inner movements are in some way inspired by God and we get to know God largely by getting to know ourselves and what happens within ourselves so we're invited to go within and find what is within and get to know ourselves. Um, if you think what I'm saying is strange, it's absolutely bedrock part of the, you know, foundational to the classical Catholic Christian spiritual tradition that knowledge of self mm. is 
one of the pillars, one of the foundations, uh, along with knowledge of God. And so we're invited to get to know ourselves. And as we go into our inner world, there are tremendous treasures there. Mm. That's the thing. I mean, the, the treasure of all treasures is God himself, God himself of course. Hey. We, we encounter him. Yeah. Um, but there's treasures of healing. There's treasures of wisdom. There's treasures of insight. There's treasures of power. A mountain of gold is hardly adequate to um, mm. to portray an image of how great the treasure is. But uh, but if you like a mountain of gold, that's perhaps easy to understand. And the dragon guards the mountain of gold in our um, in, in mythology, mm. you know. Um, and that's very much what it's like when we go within. Um, there are great treasures there, but there's monsters as well, and there's danger, and um, and that anger is one of the things we're going to find if we go in. Mm. Um, so the hero normally slays a dragon, or, or <laughs> it, how would you see that in the spiritual life? Like, does that mean we kind of how do we slay mm. anger? Is that even the right word? Yeah, look, I don't, I don't like that. Um, I don't like that very much. Um, uh, that that kind of imagery. Um, look, I pers- personally, I pr- very much prefer uh, the idea of befriending the dragon. Um, yeah, uh, other, other another image of that that great power within would be perhaps the lion, um, and you know, imagery like um, uh, Aslan in in uh, the Narnia books um, or. Uh, Mufasa, even. Mufasa in the yeah, in the Lion, Lion King, King uh, or Simba eventually when mm. he grows up, um, gives you an idea of the of the the power and and danger of the creature that is there, but also the no- mm. nobility of it. And there are stories uh, that have us um, have us encountering the dragon and befriending the dragon and um, you know riding the dragon, being able to fly riding the dragon um we would grow in trust it's like a relationship with the dragon where Mm. where the dragon gets to know us and we get to know the dragon and we learn to work together and trust each other Mm. um but if he's been um neglected and rejected punished and abused and every time he pops up he's been told that he's not allowed to exist even Mm. he's going to be all distorted and angry and uh, you know uh, vicious like mm. a you know like an abused dog you've been abusing this dog yeah, you don't expect right, right. the dog to learn to trust you yeah um, quickly you have to work slowly and carefully and eventually uh, win its trust um, that's kind of like that I hope Father Tony is already giving you a new appreciation for both dragons and anger I went on to ask him about something I didn't initially understand about this idea of befriending my anger. What's the difference between acting out of one's anger and accepting one's anger? Here is what Father Tony had to say about that. Okay, so acting out and accepting are not the same thing. They can seem like the same thing just because we've got no concept of just accepting an Mm. interior state without acting out of it Mm. the way of accepting the interior state is just to pay attention to it describe it and name it Mm. i feel this tension in my guts Mm. i feel this fire rising up through my chest i feel this tension in my shoulders and my arms i feel this desire to punch or this (laughs) desire to (laughs) yell or scream my anger's Um, a lot more graphic than how you started off there (laughs) Yeah, sure, 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 sure. But but then maybe imagine myself yeah. standing on a mountaintop screaming or right. or swinging an axe or um now there's a strong and this is why we need to go st- slowly as we begin to acknowledge interiorly there is a strong impetus to act out exteriorly and we need to learn over time to separate those two separate. realities to right. separate interior acceptance from exterior acting out Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to be alarmed at first because we haven't been taught that those two things are separate things Um, 
and it, we're going to be under some stress for a while when we experience when we acknowledge the interior anger and we think that means I have to express it outwardly. Mm. I have to live with that stress for a while while I gradually learn that it's okay to feel stressed inside. It's okay to feel tense inside. It's okay to feel powerful inside. It's okay to feel a desire to yell or punch mm. or scream or or whatever it is that anger wants to, to smash things. It's okay to feel that desire. It's not okay to do those things. Right, um, right, right. Because what's the alternative to someone who, who doesn't accept that that's, for example, that, that desire to smash things and to express that? Well, like longer term, like from a spiritual perspective, from a physical... Uh, look, there's, there's a million, there's a million um, distorted manifestations of anger um, mm. from uh, anxiety right. to depression to uh, unforgiveness, to um, uh, self-loathing, to uh, a controlling mentality, um, to sexual acting out, um, mm. to um, addictions to busyness. I mean, the, the, the list is endless. We've got this power inside us and if it doesn't find its proper place, it's going to find an improper place. It's as simple as that. Mm. It just will. And that's when the dragging actually becomes f- oh, uh, truly becomes destructive yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. also in a way that we can't even explain. The first place we encounter the value of the human person is in ourselves. So we have inside ourselves this tremendous passion for our own worth. Mm. And anger rises up as this great power against anything that threatens my worth threatens what yeah. i deserve yeah. Yeah. as yeah. a child of god as someone in the likeness of god as someone of infinite value mm. um if you are treated badly if you are neglected if you are devalued if you are abused or trampled or used that is evil mm. and it in some ways it's really the fundamental evil mm. because the goodness of the person is the presence of the divine goodness in the world. Therefore, anger rises up to defend that. Yeah, so the dragon value. in that sense becomes beca- the, the guardian, the, yes, the custodian, right. the, the defender of, of our of nobility. That, and of fights our, for it. Yes. And you, you want, <laughs> like yes. you said, you want something powerful and, yes. and fire yes. breathing if you're going yes. to fight against another, yes. another beast. Yes, you know, yes, a lie, yes. a deception in the world that wants to take away that human yeah, dignity. Yeah, well, that, that I mean, divine. one of the things you discover as you go on this journey of letting the anger have its place is just how enormous is the evil and deception of yeah, the world. Like, yeah. I think most Christians are very, very naive about how enormous and hideous and horrific is mm. the distortion and falsehood that's just endemic in in our social order and um, it needs an enormous mm. power to oppose that's great okay um, I think we're we are we're way over time actually in a good way I'm glad this conversation went the way it did um, any final words of wisdom or encouragement to a listener who's who wants to take this this journey the inner journey to have a look at their dragon and to and to yeah, and to find that nobility within mm. their anger. Any... Mm. Mm. Well, um, one thing that I haven't mentioned yet, which I think is key to it, key to it all, is is truth and reality. Right. Um, Jesus is referred to as the truth, and as long as we're telling ourselves the truth about ourselves, we can't go too far wrong. So. If I feel angry and I tell myself the truth about that, that I feel angry, that I feel tense inside, that I feel like hurting someone, Mm. that I feel like never talking to that person again, that's, I think truth is a very good guide in all this. Seek Mm. the truth. Seek to speak the truth about yourself to yourself. Mm. Yeah, tell, tell yourself the truth about yourself at all times and practice it and do it more and more and, um, yeah. And I, I think that's a that's a pretty good guide to uh, to growing in the right direction in this. 
Okay, so there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed today's special episode with Father Tony Schick. As a beautiful flow on from all that we've been covering today, I want to recommend for the practical pilgrim exercise a movie called I Am Dragon. It's a Russian love story that was released a couple of years ago now. Tony actually explains that it is a beautiful illustration, very profound way of talking about and, and kind of visualizing what we've been discussing today stuff about acknowledging and trusting and even loving one's inner dragon. See if you can put yourself in young Mira's shoes if you get to watch it, and let her journey with the dragon become your journey with your own anger. So, that's it for today, and I look forward to your company again next week on The Myth Pilgrim. And until then, happy dragon befriending. Take care, and God bless.